Okay, hi Year 9. So today, Monday the 4th of May, we're going to do a weather hazards summary. So this is everything that we've done on weather hazards, whether it was before school closed and what you've been doing during home learning as well. So hopefully that way everyone should get up to speed and then we're all at the same point before moving on to the next part, okay, of this natural hazards topic. So this is a weather hazards summary. So anything you've got missing, you need to make sure you've got down in your geography notes. So let's get started. So I thought, first of all, we'll link it to the specification. So obviously we're on GCSE content at the moment, AQA. So we're on weather hazards. So first of all, you should have looked at a bit of global atmospheric circulation. Then you went on to tropical storms. So how they form, where they form, um, impact of the climate change could have on them. And then you looked at an example of tropical storms, which our example is Typhoon Haiyan, which is where sort of home learning started at about this point here. Then you looked at monitoring, prediction, protection and planning. And you had a sheet to fill out for that. And then we went on to the UK, so sort of what type of like extreme weather we've had. And um, then we looked on the example of recent extreme weather events, where you had two to look at, which was beast from the east and the summer heat wave, both impacting the UK in 2018. And then that is basically the end of this bit. So we're gonna start right up here, back at the beginning, okay? So global atmospheric circulation, okay? What it is, is just a definition for this to start off with. So if you haven't got this down in any of your notes or anything like that, you need to get this down first of all. So it's the movement of air around the Earth to try and balance the Earth's temperature. Obviously, you can pause this video whenever you need to to write anything down. I'm just going to keep going. So what, influence, what influences the Earth's temperature? So three main things. First of all, we've got latitude, um, curvature of the Earth, and air pressure. So there are three main things. Okay. So latitude is basically how high or low you are on the Earth's surface. So the equator is at zero degrees latitude, so it has a low latitude, whereas at the poles, so the North Pole is 90 degrees north, so it has a high latitude, and the South Pole is 90 degrees south, so it also has a high latitude. So the UK, we're about here, roughly about 60 degrees-ish, so we're in middle latitude. Next one then, curvature of the Earth, okay, so the Earth is a sphere, nice and round, so it's how much sunlight that the Earth gets. So at the equator, we get sunlight directly overhead all year round, which means it's very hot, as we all know. Same at the tropics, okay? And obviously then at the North Pole and the South Pole, due to the tilt of the Earth, we have sort of six months darkness, roughly six months of sunlight, okay? Obviously that changes through seasons, um, but they get a lot less sun, so it's colder. Next up is our air pressure, okay? So air pressure is just the movement of air, okay? So cold air sinking gives us high pressure on the Earth's surface. Warm air that's been warmed up on the Earth's surface, rising upwards, um, gives us low pressure because it's not pressing on the Earth's surface. So high pressure, air moving down, low pressure, air moving up. Okay, so then we pull all three of those together into our global atmospheric circulation model. So it might be worthwhile if you've not got this, getting a diagram of it as well, and then trying to explain it in your own words, or just sort of writing down what I say. So here we have our Earth. Okay, and then we're going to have our lines of latitude. So in the middle, zero degrees is our equator. 30 degrees south, 32 degrees north, so they're roughly our tropics, okay? 60 degrees south, 60 degrees north, and then 90 degrees south, south pole, 90 degrees north, north pole. So there are lines of latitude. Right, next bit. So we're gonna talk about what sort of climate we get at each of our different lines of latitude. So on our equator, it is hot and wet, okay? We know it's hot, we get sun all year round there, and it is wet um, because of low pressure, okay? So it's hot and wet, and that is because of low pressure. We know that because we get a tropical rainforest. 
we're not going to have lots of trees there if it's dry. Okay, so hot and wet, tropical rainforest, we've got low pressure. So because we've got low pressure, we know that our air is moving up. Okay, so if this is the uh, surface, so this is you stood here. Okay, this is the atmosphere. So our air is moving off the Earth's surface up into the atmosphere. Okay, so as our air moves, it will then sink back down, okay, because it cools up here. Well, no, it's colder up in the atmosphere. So this air that's risen up here will cool and sink, okay, and it will sink at sort of either side of the equator, sort of a bit higher up than the tropics. So we get high pressure. So air going up, low pressure, air coming down, high pressure. And that is at sort of 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. So that means that we get hot and dry climate. So it's dry because the air is moving down. Okay, we're not gonna get any clouds forming from evaporation. And it is hot because we're still gonna get lots of sunshine pretty much all year round at 30 degrees north. So we get our biome would be a hot desert, okay? So hot and dry for both there due to high pressure and lots of sunshine, okay? So here we have our first lot of air movement. So from the equator, the air has gone up, then it sinks down, okay? And this has formed what we call here a cell. So a movement of air, okay? And this first one is what we call the Hadley cell. Carrying on. So picking up the pattern, we're low, high, high. So we're gonna end up having low pressure next, okay? So 60 degrees north, low pressure, 60 degrees south, low pressure. Okay, so we're low in the middle, high on either side, then low on either side of that. I'm sure you can guess what we're gonna be at the poles as well. So low pressure means it's going to be wet, we're going to have air going up again, which means we're going to get clouds and rain. And it is going to be more mild now, we're not going to be hot, okay, we're going to the curvature of our earth, we're not going to get as much sunshine all year round. So if we think of the UK and our climate, obviously we have our seasons, so in the summer when we're tilted towards the earth we get more sunshine, but then we also have our winter when we're tilted away from the sun, um, which means that therefore we get colder days. So we're more of a mild temperature, pretty much wet most of the year, split into our seasons, which gives, gives us what we call a temperate climate. Okay, it basically means it's middle. So we get that 60 degrees north, 60 degrees south, roughly. It's a generalization. So it's nice and wet, okay? So we already said if it's low pressure, the air is moving upwards, rising air, okay? And obviously our air will therefore rise upwards and it will move, some of it will move towards the pole, towards the North Pole, some of it will move back towards the tropics, the tropical region, okay? So this gives us our middle cell there between 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south, which is the feral cell, okay? Next bit then. So where our air has risen upwards at 60 degrees north, so here, risen upwards, obviously it sank back down here, giving us high pressure at the tropics, hot desert, but it also will sink back down up here at 90 degrees north, uh, sinking downwards is going to be high pressure, okay? And that last cell is our polar cell. So you've got your three cells between the different lines of latitude, okay? So we've got high pressure at the poles. So climate-wise, this means that we're gonna be cold, okay? We've got periods of darkness, especially in the, in the winter, winter season at the North Pole, so it's gonna be cold, and it is dry, okay? It's a cold desert, right? I, yeah, so dry means no rain, so desert would be a cold desert. So we get tundra or polar biomes, and that's at both the North and the South Pole. So you can almost imagine like a mirror running along the equator, you get sort of this mirrored effect here. 
Okay, so it's the same at the top as it is below. And these cells here going upwards would also be the same going down here. So you'd have a Hadley cell here, feral cell here, and a polar cell here. And you can quite easily draw the arrows on depending on the pressure. So if it's low pressure, it's going up, high pressure, arrow going down, low pressure, up, high pressure, down. And you can always quite easily then draw the in-between arrows, okay? Right, the last bit now in this model is the wind, okay? So winds always blow from high to low pressure. A nice little rhyme there. So you can quite easily draw your arrows on. So they always blow from high pressure to low pressure and from east to west, okay? So high pressure, there we are, I've got the trade winds from high to low in the tropics. So depending on where they've come from, whether it be the north or the south, it depends on which sort of trade winds they are. So if we go to the northern hemisphere, high to low, so you've got winds blowing from 30 degrees north to 60 degrees north, and from 90 degrees north to 60 degrees north. And they are the polar easterlies and the south westerlies. And then in the southern hemisphere, you've got the north westerlies and the polar easterlies. Okay, all blowing in. So you need to make sure you've got a full diagram of that. If you're a bit unsure on it and the understanding, I mean, they were year nine, okay, I'm sure some of you have taken GCSE geography, so you've got two years yet before you sort of need to know this in loads and loads of detail. But it's good to have a really good diagram of it. If you've got it and you understand it, brilliant. So next part of the spec then is looking at tropical storms. So here we've got a definition of a tropical storm. If you haven't got this down, I would get this in your geography notes, please. I won't read it out. Next bit then. So how do tropical storms form? Um, worthwhile, I know a lot of classes probably have got this, but getting a copy of this diagram. This is from out of the GCSE textbook. Um, so getting a copy of the diagram, and then this explains the diagram step by step. So these are now in order um, of how a tropical storm is formed. Okay, so you can quite easily link the diagram to the explanation. So again, in your book or in your notes or wherever you're doing your work, just put the subtitle, how do tropical storms form? Get a really big picture of the diagram, and then underneath, just write out these seven points. Okay? Next bit then, is where do tropical storms form? So we don't get tropical storms directly on the equator. They're usually about five to 15 degrees north and south of the equator, okay? So these are some of the conditions required for where tropical storms form. Again, I'll get the subtitle and you can get these notes down. If you Google where do tropical storms form, you can even get a picture. So if you've got a printer at home, you wanna get a picture, print it out, glue it in with your notes. Brilliant. Carrying on then. So this is looking at how climate change um, is going to affect our tropical storms in the future. Now, I know um, this was sort of the first one of the bits of home learning, I think, for some of us. Um, and like this table, I think, was uploaded on Show My Homework. So you're looking at distribution, frequency and intensity. If you've not got this for any reason, um, then you can just get a copy of this. I don't mind if you want to like print screen the video, print it off, glue it in your notes, um, make you draw a table out and copy it all down. Okay, and you can quite easily go through and highlight any key bits. But it's looking at how our tropical storms are going to be changed in distribution, frequency and intensity if the earth gets warmer. Okay. Right, the third part then of our weather hazard summary is looking at Typhoon Haiyan. So this was definitely the first part of home learning, okay? Um, so this was looking at the Eye of the Storm documentary, which was about an hour long on YouTube, and most of you have watched, uploaded your work, taken pictures of it, and you had to do a Typhoon Haiyan summary. So you're looking at the causes, effects, and responses to the tropical storm, okay? Some of them are here. So any of these you've got missing, I want you to sort of add to your um, summary diagram, but you should have those split up quite clearly into causes, effects and response. The pages from the revision guide were also uploaded um, onto Show My Homework, so you could quite easily go back through Show My Homework for Geography and check you've got all of that down. Really important. 
Right, our next bit then, um, I thought this was quite sort of a straightforward um, exercise for you to have a go at. So I'm worthwhile pausing it at this point, and then for each one, you can decide if it's a, a cause and effect or response. Then go through your notes, because these are straight out of the revision guide, um, and check you've got them right. So it's a bit of a knowledge check for you on typing high am. Okay, next bit was looking at monitoring, prediction, protection, and planning um, against tropical storms. Okay, again, this is all out the textbook. The pages were uploaded for you with a table that you could have used to fill in um, sort of this part. Okay, so you're looking through saying, how is monitoring going to help with reduce the risk? Um, how is prediction going to help reduce the risk of people being affected by tropical storms? Protection, so things like building storm shelters, which they did um, do as a long term response for Typhoon Haiyan, and then also planning as well. Especially, this is more effective in sort of high income countries where they can plan effectively because they've got the money and the technology. Okay, next bit then. So, we were now looking at the UK and how they've been affected by weather hazards. So, first of all, we're looking at what makes weather extreme. So, as a definition, if you haven't got this, it's worthwhile getting down. So, it's anything that's unexpected, unusual, unpredictable. And then some examples of extreme weather in the UK. Flooding, drought, storms, um, extreme cold spells, and sort of extreme heat waves that last a long time. So, here we are. These are some he newspaper headings um, sort of looking at extreme weather in the UK. So these notes were on the PowerPoint as part of the home learning from last week. So you're looking at why might extreme weather events be on the increase? So you can get these down, please. I won't read them out again, okay? And then the last bit as part of this weather hazard summary is an example of an extreme weather event that's impacted on the UK. So we're looking at two for this. So beast from the east and the summer heat wave, both in 2018, so two very extreme weather events. So you need to look at why they happened, what caused them, and then look at the social, economic, and environmental impact. So on the PowerPoint that was uploaded, I put the sort of same slide on here. There were some sort of facts that I put together. There were some of the links on YouTube as well, um, looking at sort of the facts on bees from the East. So you look at causes, um, and then social, economic, and environmental impacts. Okay, so things like Total damage was 1.2 billion. It's going to be an economic impact. We're talking about money. Okay. Social is anything to do with sort of people. Okay. So drivers being stranded in vehicles, you could have a social. Um, and then environmental is anything sort of looking um, about how it's impacted the environment. Okay. And then for summer heat wave. A little bit the same. Um, so you're looking at why it happened, what happened, sort of the causes, and then social, economic, and environmental impacts. And there's also some YouTube links there. So I said for you to do that as a big A4 summary sheet. So ideally one for each one, so you know both of these examples really well. There's loads and loads of stuff on the internet on these, okay? And like I said, you can add some color and make sure you sort of know your facts really well. So for, following on from this summary, on show my homework, I'm going to set a 25 question quiz. Okay, it's quite straightforward, um, multiple choice, and basically the grades from that we're going to take in as a weather hazards sort of check to see how you are getting on. Okay, so that is everything for our weather hazards summary. So we pretty much tick off all of this. Like I said, anything you've got missing, you need to make sure you're all up to speed. Because um, from next week, we're going to be starting on um, a new topic. Okay. Thanks, guys. Stay safe. See you soon.